Welcome to our first official project using Affinity Designer. Today we're going to recreate this logo for a food truck company that serves up fresh, colorful popsicles. I thought we would embrace their product and do a similar bright logo full of colors that pop. I have a downloadable photo you can bring in to use as a guide for sampling colors and drawing the basic shapes as we work through this logo design. This project will really get us to dive deep into learning the gradient tool, as well as starting to work with typography and details. And just for an experiment, I created this project in both Adobe Illustrator and Affinity Designer to really prove the fact that Affinity Designer can really keep up with the more expensive software. So let's go ahead and get started by opening up a new document. So I opened up a new print document. It's an A7, but you can use any size you want. We just need some room to play around with our logo design and create our illustrations. So you can also use an eight and a half by 11 if you want, just, just kind of an open, airy artboard that we can have lots of room to do our design with. So let's go ahead and bring in that photo resource to kind of give us a guide on sampling colors when we get to that point. So let's say I want to bring a JPEG in. We have this handy little tool called the Place Image Tool. And we're just going to take this uh, JPEG that we have for the class, double click, and instead of just, if I just press and click, it's going to load the entire full resolution image, or I can kind of crop it and, and kind of just click and drag and, and get an appropriate size. So let's go ahead and create, I'm in our layers panels to create a new layer. It's going to be for our popsicles. We're just going to call it pop. And we're going to go ahead and trace these. What I want to do is go back to this layer and just reduce the transparency. We just need an idea for the size. We don't really need to do color or anything too complex yet. And let's lock that layer so that doesn't get accidentally moved around. So we're back here in our pop layers as we're going to be drawing our idea. So we have four different popsicle flavors that we want to eventually incorporate either on the food truck or on the logo design. We want to do a wide variety of the different flavors they offer. So they offer orange, strawberry, kind of this tri-color, and then a chocolate. So I thought these would all help us experiment with gradients at a, at a good level because there's a lot of different gradients represented here. So let's do one, and then when we've done one, we can duplicate it and then start to kind of add our gradients. So we're going to start with this orange popsicle first. So what we want to do is we want to get a nice thick stroke shape here. So let's get our pen tool and let's get a nice dark stroke. So let's get a nice kind of dark gray right here on the color. So that's our gray and let's flip it to stroke and let's make it rather thick. So I'm going to go to my stroke panel and let's see the thickness here. Let's see if we can't match the thickness. Let's go ahead and draw this first line. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. Just, just trying to match the thickness. We can always go back and change this if we wanted to. And so that's a great thickness. So now we need to kind of draw the shape. So we can trace this with the pen tool and create anchor points and do that. Or we can make it even easier on ourselves. We already have some great shapes we can use out of the box. Let's do our rectangle tool. Instead of having to draw perfect lines, we already have a tool that can do this for us. So what we want to do is since this is a shape, we're going to have to right click and go down to convert to curves so that we can have access to all the points. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So now we want to be able to make this kind of rounded top. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can get our node tool and we can kind of click and make a new node right there in the middle and then just slowly push it up right at the top and has a sharp point, but that's okay. So we can go up to our convert and convert that to a rounded shape. Now that we have that converted to a smooth edge, what we could do is we can take the node tool and I'm just going to be pushing out on the sides and I'm clicking and what I'm doing instead of just pushing out on the sides without creating a point like this, I'm going to be creating another node point and then bringing it out just to kind of create a nice rounded look. So you'll notice this kind of has some pointy edges. It doesn't have the same smooth look as this one to the left. So we want to smooth those out. So one thing we could do is get our corner tool or press C and then click and we're going to round that off. Click and round. And if you want it to match, you have this radius right here. So if we want the left and right sides to match, we have this 2.4. We could just copy that and then select the other side and it's already that way, but we could paste it and kind of make sure those sides match. So that's pretty close. We can go back and fine tune this a little bit later, but I think that's pretty darn close. We could take our node tool and of course make some small adjustments to the curve. 
and that's kind of our basic shape. We also want to add a little bit of rounded corners here. So you can see how it's a little rounded. It kind of helps finish off the illustration a little bit. So we're going to grab the corner tool yet again. So I'm going to press C and I'm going to be able to click and hold. And so it's 0.7. So I can click and hold. Of course, you could be using inches or another measurement. It all depends on what you're using. So there's kind of the basic shape. Let's go ahead and do the bottom part next. So we're going to do the same thing, we get our rectangle tool. We already have this great tool that we can use. So let's zoom in on this and we need to make this uh, kind of a curve as well. So what we want to do is we want to right click, we make sure we convert to curves because it's a regular shape. And now I could take the node tool, press in the middle, kind of round that out a little bit, do the same thing we did before, get the corner tool and then round off the edges. So we want to create the little accents here, these kind of little I guess highlights and shadows uh, kind of shapes here. So what we could do is we can do what's going to probably be easier is getting the pen tool and then drawing a simple line. And we want it to be perfectly straight. So let's hold down our shift click, hold down our shift button, and then click down here and we have a perfectly created vertical stroke. Let's go ahead and reduce the width on that to match. And then what we could do is we could just hold down option and drag and do our little duplicate. And then we could take our node tool and just extend that one out just a little bit longer than the other one. And let's kind of move these to the center. Let's do, instead of the three we had there, let's do two and make it a little more simple. Make these just a tiny bit thicker. Just kind of simplifying the illustration a little more. There's our little accent on the bottom. And now we want to add kind of some highlights to the top, some glossy highlights. And I also want to make sure I have the corner tool and I'm just going to kind of adjust those a little bit more, get a little more roundness there, just kind of adjusting that slightly. Okay, so now we need to draw these little highlights. The best thing to do is probably switch to the pen tool and just draw a simple stroke and make it a certain thickness that we like. And just like that, we created a highlight that goes along with the same movement of the border. And with this one, this one will be easier because we could just create an ellipse, do the ellipse tool and create a simple shape and flip it to fill to kind of give the other part of the highlight accent. So let's make both of these white. So let's make this white because it's going to be a highlight eventually. We'll make it a fill white and also make that a fill white. Great. So now we have one more basic element to do with this illustration and that is drawing the little accents are the indentations that happen on popsicles. Let's continue to use the shapes we have available to us. We're going to use the rounded rectangle tool and I'm just going to create our little indentation accents here. And what I could do here is I could just duplicate this. So hold down option and drag it over. I'm selecting both of these options. Of course I selected one and then held down shift to select both. And I'm going to just do kind of an alignment just to make sure everything has some sort of alignment happening. And I can extend those out a little bit more to match. And so we're getting pretty close to our basic kind of illustration. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see what we have here. Let's also toggle off our layer so we can kind of see our basic shape. So there's our basic shape. And of course this will eventually be filled in. So there's our basic shape that we created. I'm pretty happy with it. So now we need to add pops of color and all sorts of wonderful gradients. So we're going to get to gradients next. We're going to be able to take the photo that we've had to pull samples using the eyedropper tool and creating a wide variety of gradients.